right, ladies and gents, welcome back to another VR virtual reality extravaganza. Uh, we're going to go here with a new tutorial about orthographic views and an isometric model. And I think we're going to do two of them. And I'm going to do two different videos. One is going to be a standard video that you guys can just watch in 2D like normal. And the other one is going to be a VR version that you can uh, take a look at what I'm doing on top of a uh, nice like environment. Okay. Haven't really decided what that environment's going to look like yet, but we'll get there when we get there. All right. So here we go. We're in AutoCAD. I'm in 2021. Uh, you can be in 2021 or older. You can be in the web app. Uh, all of it is basically the same. There's a couple differences. If there is a difference while I'm doing this, I'll mention it as it's going along. All right. So here we go. We're looking at this document. Okay. This is an old school document that we had from when I first started teaching. Uh, and we're looking at some of these models. We're going to do number one and number two. The first thing that we have to look at or think about is, you know, there's no dimensions on here. So we have to think normally we're doing this on graphing paper and we're deciding how, how wide this is, how tall it is, how deep it is. So we're going to do basically the same thing here. So I'm going to say that this is probably like, let's say six units and let's say it's, uh, I don't know, one unit tall and then another, uh, two units beyond that and then four deep. Okay. We'll, we'll look at something like that and see how that works. All right. So I'm going to move this over. And we're going to start with that front view, which is the L shape. Okay, it's going to be an L. It's, it has a cutout up top and a cutout inside. But for the front view, it'll just look like an L for now. All right. So here we go. We're going to go six. And we're going to go, what did I say, three or four? I think I like four better. One, two, three, four. Let's go four. And then let's go one. I'm just making these measurements up as I go here. It really doesn't matter as long as they all match. Three. And that would give us five and then close. Okay, so I did uh, six, one, five. Uh, five, one. And I think this one was five. Let's double check. Four. Sorry, last one was four. Okay, so now we're looking at the uh, top view. All right, what happens is... All of this is going to line up across. The left side is going to go to left side. The right side is going to go to right side. What I'll do first is I'll do an offset of one inch. And just remember that if you're in the web app, you have to do offset. You click the line first, and then you move your cursor in the correct direction. Then you type your distance, and you hit enter. Okay. Uh, in the software, you're just going to do offset. You're going to type your distance first, one, and then hit enter. And then you're going to click the line you want to go off of, up or down or left to right, depending on which way you're offsetting, and then click in that direction, all right? Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the right side of this line, I'm gonna bring that across. I can do one of two things. I can bring this way across, and I can take a line and go like this, and then trim at that line, and then get rid of this. This was a dummy line. Or if, if F11 is turned on, which is object snap tracking, what I can do is I can take this, bring it across on the green line, drop down, don't click at this point, just drop down, and now scale up with it, and you should get an X for intersection. Okay, so if you don't have intersection turned on, that's an OS enter. Make sure that endpoint, midpoint, center, and intersection are turned on. All right. All right, next thing, the depth would be four. So we're going to just box this out at first. Four, six, four. Okay, looking at the top of this, it looks like it goes about a block, and then, you know, you've got a drop, and then you've got another block. So one, two, one. All right. So I'm going to take this line. I'm going to slide up, no click yet, just slide up and then click on that intersection and go across like this. That's going to basically define the top part of that shape. And now we're just missing two lines that show that this part is higher, this part is lower, and this part is higher. Okay. So what I'll do is I'll grab an offset. I'll go one inch on each side. And for now, I'll just trim these because we're going to talk about this part later. Uh, but that's basically it for the top. Okay, so we've got a higher area, a lower area, and a higher area. But they're going to look like they're flat because you're just drawing 2D shapes. Okay, 2D views. Um, again, these are called orthographic views. And the model itself is called an isometric model. All right. So now we're looking at the right side. Uh, I'm sorry, let's finish the top here. So looking at the top, this is going to go one Let's say if this was five, that's going to go about four. So one, four, one, four, sorry, one, four, two, 
Even though these look like they're the same, I made this four up here, okay? Otherwise, we'd have to split half boxes, which is not really worth it. Um, if there were dimensions, we'd obviously have to follow those, but we're making these up as we go, all right? So we're going to go offset one and one. We're just going to leave. We could make it one and a half, but it's not really a big deal. Uh, let's see. We're going to, I don't want to have double lines here. So I have this line on top of another line right now. So I'm just going to bring that back a little bit just so I know that that line is not the same line. Okay. And I'm going to trim this off in a second. Uh, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to trim, you know what? I'll leave that area for a second just so I can do my offset. My offset in is going to be four. Okay. Or three. Let's go three. I think that's going to look better. I lied. Go four. <laughs> four all right trim 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 and trim top view is done okay so you've got this like c shape and then you've got three blocks so looking at the other one you've got a c shape and three blocks even though these are higher and this one is lower they still look like they're flat okay uh right side is going to look like three blocks okay and then it's going to look like a u shape on top of that so let's start with the three blocks I'm going to go offset one again because I always put one inch space between my views. Uh, I'm not going to stretch this one yet. I'm going to go this way first. The depth was four of the model. Okay. And then the height was uh, four again. And then I'm just going to, I'm going to box this out. So I'm going to go off of this and I'm going to slide up and click there. And then rather than drawing another line here, that's going to give me two lines here, which I don't want. What I'm going to do is I'm going to erase the first one which we needed in order to start this first line here and then just close it with a good one. Okay. All right. So looking at our sheet again, uh, let's say that if this was one, that's got to be two and then this has got to be one. All right. So it's going to look like a U shape up top. So let's go one, two, three. Let's do an offset of three from the top. Okay. Or we could have just dragged that line across. Um, now you'll notice I went one, two, one, which is going to do the same thing here. Remember from the last video that if you take two, if you take a line like this and then you grab this and go angle sign, which is the less than sign 45, it'll track at 45 degrees. And you just click that out here. Cause we're going to erase it in a second. Everything that comes off of this one will then drop down to this one as it hits that line. So the very, very back part will go across and come down and that's why they line up. So let me get rid of that. Uh, let's see. This inside one will go until it comes down. And that got the position right here. And you would just have to trim, trim. And we don't need that one either. All right, same thing. Now, you don't have to do it this way. If you understand the way this model works and the way the views work, then you don't have to do that. You could just do your offsets and just figure it out on your own. Okay, it, it's just, you know, if I took this, the idea with the 45 degree is if I took this and rotated it 90 and I line this up here, this should line up with that, that should line up with that, and this part is gonna line up with the part that we didn't draw yet, okay? All right, so the U shape up top, that's gonna come down one, so let's do an offset of one, and it's gonna go one in from the left and one in from the right. Now again, be careful with the double lines. This one in is gonna give me a double line right here. And this one in is gonna give me a double line. So I'm actually going to highlight those lines, drag them back a little bit just until I figure out what I'm gonna do. And now I'll start trimming. This part will open, that'll open, that'll open, that'll open, and that will open. And that is your three views, okay? That th those three views make up this isometric model. We still need to do hidden lines and center lines. There are no center lines because there are no circles or curves. So you don't have to worry about that. But we do have to have some hidden lines. This part right here, let's open up a new document. This might actually help some understand. If I go to the front, I'm going to start doing the 3D model at the same time. I'm going to copy this and I'm going to put it to the front because that is the front view. If I were to join these, which you have to do when you're doing 3D models, I gotta pay attention to the numbers. It says six objects converted to one polyline. One, two, three, four, five, six. That is correct, okay? Now I reset my view, I go back to the top, and I go to the bottom right corner. Remember, this is just the side that you're drawing on, and this over here is the side that you are looking at. So I'm gonna look at this from a different view, which is why I hit the bottom right corner, okay? Now, if it was just an L, 
then this model would be very simple. It would be, well here, by the way, you don't have to type extrude, you can go to your 3D tools. If you click the gear down here, you go to 3D basics. But unfortunately, between tabs, you have to keep changing that back and forth. It doesn't remember that you wanna do 2D tools on this one and 3D tools on that one, which is unfortunate. I wish they would change that, um, but that's okay. The software's still great. All right, so if I were to take this and extrude it and I go, let's say negative four, that would be the end of that model. That's it, it's just an L shape, unless there are some kind of hidden lines describing what's going on in these other views. So if we go back to here, you'll see that there is a notch cut out here, this letter C. So what we have to do is define how far in does that notch cut? It goes all the way to this line. So that means I'm gonna slide down, then I'm gonna have a line right here. Selecting that, I can see, I gotta go back to my 2D tools now. Selecting this line, going to line types. It's not loaded yet. Go to other, go to load, and you can slide down. Now, also, you could create a template that has all of this stuff loaded already and all your settings that you like. Maybe I'll do a video on that at some point, but it's not really that hard. You just have to open up a file, you know, start the way that you want it to, change all your settings, save it, and then open up that file every time and just do a save as every time you're, you're working inside of it. Um, we don't need center lines. We're gonna go to hidden and we're gonna go to the hidden 2.5x and hit okay, all right? So this one is going to be a hidden two, so that's perfect. Now, otherwise in this view, right now we would have where this part is cut out, but we didn't define this part yet. So going back, you can see from this view that if I brought that across, that's gonna tell me how deep this cut is. So you have to work between the views. Slide across, click at the intersection, click. This is gonna be a hidden line. So now you've got this. This view is completely done. It tells me that there's something back here, whether it's something that's cut in here or it's cut in there, but it's saying, hey, there's something here. Look in the other views to figure out what that is. And I look in the other view and I could say, okay, here's the cutout, right? And this is saying, hey, there's something going on here. Is it cut from this side or that side? We don't know, but if you look into the other view, there it is, you can see it, okay? So outside of that, there are no other hidden lines because you can see this C shape, you can see these three notches. If there was something cut out of the bottom, like let's say we had something down here that was cut out and it went the whole distance, okay? What that would do is that would give you some hidden lines in here saying, hey, down there, there's something going on. Like, let's just give an example. Let's say it was there, and I'm just making these lines up here and there going through like a little tunnel, those would be two hidden lines. But in this case, we are done and we don't have to do anything else. So let's finish the 3D model. Going back to the model, resetting my view. Okay, every time you orbit around, you should really do, you should really go back to top up here and then go back to the bottom right corner. And now we're looking at it in an isometric view again. Now, if I need to understand that these two lines are not the same, maybe I do wanna orbit that down a little bit just so I can see the difference. Uh, you can either use the orbit tool over here, you can, and you just click and drag, you know, click and drag the screen, um, or you can type orbit, or you can hold shift on the keyboard and click down on the scroller, and that gives you the orbit, and then you just move your mouse. Okay, so you can do that a couple different ways. All right, so 3D model. Um, let's see, what do we want to do? We want to do a line. Remember, this is a full 3D model, so you can't offset any of these edges. They're just one full model. But what I can do is I can make a dummy line on top of this edge. Don't forget that it's there. I am currently in the top view because I did top and then went to bottom right corner. Okay. Um, how much time we got here? 14 minutes. Not bad. Um, so now I can offset that since this was the last time I hit top. You can see the grid is on the top shape. And as I offset across by one, it'll offset across the top. Now I'm gonna hit escape and spacebar brings me back in to an enter, okay? By the way, every time I say hit enter, you can also hit spacebar, it's really the same thing. So I, so that's why you don't see me reaching across my keyboard to get to the enter, I'm, I'm hitting spacebar. Um, but now you know, all right? So we get something like this, okay? Uh, now let's see, what do we wanna do for the next part? Well, we wanna erase this line first, okay? And looking at the 3D model, we wanna build a model within a model, okay? And cut this part out. So what I like to use here is called the box tool. So let's go back to our 3D tools. I don't know if I've used the box tool before in a video, but it's very simple, it just makes a box. 
So all you do, as long as top was the last thing I clicked, when I click here, it'll go across like that. And then it wants to know, so it's looking for clicks. Okay, so where do we start? One click. And then where does that box end? The opposite corner. So you click there. And then it wants to know how far down. And that's going to be a negative, I believe we went, what did we go? One, negative one. Okay. Uh, don't forget to get rid of your lines. Those were just dummy lines to get the positions. Okay. Now we could do this another way, but hang on. If I erase these lines, I would then do subtract, click the main model, hit enter, and then click what I want to cut out and hit enter. And it'll cut that out. But we could have also not done box. We could have left these lines. We could have closed these sides and then grab those four lines that we made and do join that gives you a four to one then take this and extrude negative one and then subtract it so you can do either way I like to teach both ways because you'll end up being in a situation later on where you might need to use only one or only the other and obviously it helps if you know both alright so we got that part so now we're gonna do the exact same thing and also by the way we can go to conceptual here just to take a look at this model and see that it looks good oh yeah that looks nice perfect right all right back to 2d wireframe every time you're working you're on 2d wireframe um, let's go like this let's put a dummy line down here let's put a dummy line here okay remembering my dimensions we went one two one okay so off of this line offset by the way I still am on the top face here even though I'm looking at a 3d view top is the last thing I did if the grid is not under the model like let's say I was still on front and I did an orbit you'll see the grid completely changes and it's on the front and I won't be able to offset this in the correct direction it's gonna go up or down not back back and forward okay so reset your view if you see that happen go back to top and go to the bottom right corner alright so offset one and then escape spacebar brings you back in to spacebar or enter now I can't see where this line is going because it's lining up perfect with this line so why don't you orbit a little bit and then you'll be able to see the difference of what line is what all right so now we can see that we've got something like this all right now get rid of the original line don't forget to get rid of that uh, offset we want to go how far was that in I think this was four in and the whole thing was six so let's see what that looks like offset four enter all right that is correct and now we just got some trimming to do trim now this is where it gets confusing don't let this flip inside out on you if it does go back to top and reset your view sometimes your eyeballs trick you okay and you just get that correct orbit that way you can tell what's going on up there uh, you could also flip to conceptual again and just see okay now I can see now you can trim in this view as well it just is a little bit more confusing and the, the mouse doesn't really go where you want it to go alright so that's why I'm always on 2d wireframe alright trim uh, by the way, when you're on trim, you're just clicking anything that you don't want when you're in 2021. When you're in 2020 or newer, you have to hit another enter, and that gives you what's called a quick trim. And then you can click what you don't want as well. Uh, in the web app, I believe it's just trim and then click what you don't want. All right, so it's a little confusing across the board, but there obviously are different ways to do it as they're upgrading the software. All right, so this line, and, and I also do this sometimes. I'll take my model and completely erase the model just to make sure there's no double lines anywhere. You can see I still have a double line down here. So control Z is gonna bring back my model. I'm gonna flip this down and get rid of this line. And now what I can do is just close. I could have trimmed it, but I'm just gonna close the end here. Or we could do the box tool. You know, you learn both ways now, so figure out which way you like better. I've got four lines, join. It says four objects converted to one 3D polyline, which is fine, don't worry about that, okay? and this is going to extrude negative one and then we are going to subtract from the main model enter the small model enter and then you'll see on conceptual that it did cut that out okay so that's it for this one I was going to go into two different models but I didn't realize that my explanation was gonna be 20 minutes long so we'll create another one after this alright I appreciate you guys watching and I will see you guys in the next one later